Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Well, I focus my presentation on the medical issues that we face and other teams, uh, team physicians face in the preparation prior to Olympics and during the Olympics. So it's not exactly my only experience, but also the experience that other colleagues experience during the games. So first of all, of course, no disclosure um, from my side. And uh, when we are organizing and preparing the Olympics, we have to consider that we are not only the doctors of the athletes, also the doctors of the full team. And no, we are not only there just doing a reactive uh, job, uh, expecting the athletes to come with a call or with an injury and uh, treating them, but we have to try to prevent uh, that from happening. And uh, also we have to take care of the officials that play a very important role during the Olympics. And just as a, a show of um, uh, the importance of sometimes our job during the Olympics, I went only once during the whole Olympics to hospital and was to accompany one of our VIPs. So we were lucky that we didn't have big, big uh, problems. But the athletes sometimes are not that important in the, mean, in the team. I mean, we also should rem remember that the non-athletes are very, very important. So these are, this is the list of the most important things we faced, we anticipated, and we planned for. Uh, of course, we will talk about uh, SICA a lot, but uh, some of the other things only happened there and we were not uh, expecting them. Like, for instance, the, the lack of uh, cleaning during the, in, in the Olympic Village. But I, I will uh, go in, in depth about that. First of all, SICA. In the months leading to Olympics, there were an unprecedented media attention to the Sika. And it seems that all of us we would be in trouble there and there could be a, a big problem. By the way, that's my hand. I got beaten the first, very first night because I forgot to use the repellent the first night. But then I used the insecticide and I was safe. But most of us, we were a sting, of course. So remember the transmission of this... Uh, uh, virus that at the end apparently is not that severe. Fortunately, it's not Ebola, but uh, everybody was talking about this in the previous months. And have a look to the distribution of the population of the Edes Egypti in uh, Brazil. So thank God that we had the uh, Olympic Games in the winter time in uh, Rio and not in Carnival, because in Carnival could be have a nightmare. Uh, but uh, the population was very, very, very low. So the prob probability of being infected was lower because, thankfully, uh, the uh, mosquito in winter time uh, settles down quite a bit. So, of course, the, we insisted about the classic measures to use repellent, to use long sleeves, to try to use insecticides. Uh, fortunately, the, we were well provided. We distributed uh, two repellent uh, uh, in base, um, bags to every single athlete and official. We also got from the organizing committee electrical repellent that we plugged in the, in the rooms. And uh, we didn't have uh, any pregnant women in our uh, team, which is uh, an advantage. But uh, uh, I think uh, most of the things is easy to prepare. Uh, these are the mm, information we prepared to the Olympics. We uh, listed uh, several uh, things that we wanted to prevent and we wanted to inform and educate our athletes. And do, we produced one uh, booklet that was distributed in Rio to all the athletes and all the officials. And uh, when the athletes read this, as you can see, most, most of them were, and the athletes and mainly the officials, they were much, much more interested about the six months of safety, of uh, sex, uh, safe sex after the uh, stay in Rio than anything else. Everybody was talking about that and everybody was kidding about that. Okay, so, um, the funny thing is that the World Health Organization just said recently, two or three weeks ago, that no single case case was declared. I respectfully disbelieve that. I don't think that we won't be in a single case. Probably it's not, has, has not been confirmed, has not been declared, but imagine in, in 20 days, more or less, it will be, it was 20 million people visiting Rio. So I, I, I can't imagine that not a single of that visitors got uh, Sika. Thankfully, is Sika now is lower in that area and is spreading more in the Caribbean, unfortunately, but Anyway, this is a question that maybe we have to follow in the following, to follow in the following weeks. 
Uh, we also produce uh, advice about the travel. So how to prepare for the travel, how to do the jet lag. There is six hours gap from Doha to um, uh, Rio, and most of the team we f flew from Doha to Dubai, and then Dubai, uh, Rio. It, it was decided like that way because uh, Qatar Airways has a direct flight to Sao Paulo, not to Rio. And uh, the problem is, as you say, you go to Sao Paulo, you have to check out, then check in again. And imagine some of us, we were traveling with 10 uh, pieces, it would be uh, a difficult thing. So we was decided to do that way. So at the end, the, the travel was 17, eight, uh, 18 hours, so it was a quite long travel. But I think we organized quite well, and most of the athletes uh, adjusted well. And also, we distributed every single athlete some pills for melatonin. So all the athletes were treated to, with melatonin, with five grams per day during five days. So they adjusted quite well to the new uh, timetable. So we were planned, and I think we were prepared for that. One of the main problems we faced there was the, the safety, the personal safety. So uh, during the, again, the months leading to the games, everybody was talking about maglins, about the assaults in the city and several teams and individual members were attacked in the streets. So this continued to happen during the streets. I, I won't discuss about uh, Lokte and his famous uh, fake uh, assault, but it, all the rest of the assaults were really mm, were real and uh, there were three or four uh, cases and even uh, it was funny that at the equestrian uh, media side, uh, a, a, a bullet. Uh, tear the, 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 the wall. So, and also one of the journalists' bus was shot by somebody with a gun in, in the way from the basketball area. So the crime problem in Rio is, is, a, is a fact. So this is a question that we could control and uh, it's difficult to control, but we were concerned about that. Uh, then, uh, tap water was not uh, recommended to be drink during the games, so we insisted everybody to, to drink uh, mineral water. It was easy because during the games, uh, Coca-Cola that has been served Olympics for almost 80 years uh, is disposing uh, Coke uh, juice and water everywhere. So that, that wasn't an issue, but we had to insist the athletes, for instance, to brush their teeth with uh, mineral water instead with the tap water or uh, doing, uh, avoiding things like that to uh, avoid problems. Another common situation during the Olympics is overeating. So imagine going to a dining hall that is like four football pitches, like this, one beside the other, with four different kitchens for uh, Brazil food, Oriental food, uh, halal and uh, other kind of uh, kitchens. And then you realize, oh my goodness, uh, I can't eat anything. This time, fortunately, uh, McDonald's was out of the dining room. But we had a very nice uh, chicken dispensing uh, pizza, pizza every day. And I was surprised that many athletes were having breakfast with pizza. And it was surprising for me. I am not say I don't have anything against that, but it was surprising. So we decided to give them some advice how to organize their diet during the games. And Daniel Kings, our head nutritionist, uh, helped uh, the design of these that was distributed uh, 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 among the athletes. And uh, we had also an Arabic version that our colleague Omar, Omar al Sarafi helped us to translate. So everybody was aware, more or less, how to organize their eating during the games. And this is a very important thing. Probably this was the major issue we faced. So when we came there, the Olympic Village was a completely new uh, facility, open for us, and we were the first neighbor to go in. So we realized that they didn't clean it before, and then, unfortunately, the cleaning system was not good. So I can tell you that the whole team, the whole time, the elevators were dirty, uh, the common areas like the lobbies, like the stairs, were literally uh, smelling to dust every single day. So. We, f we were facing this situation and also uh, discussing with the organizing committee that they tried to help a lot and uh, we have to pay tribute to the, mainly the volunteers that will help our team and also uh, other teams. Uh, we face the same situation in many, many teams. And for instance, 
this uh, picture has been taken for our colleague David Hughes that, uh, to show that even other colleagues, as we did, uh, we had to clean ourselves, the, the medical service, because the, the cleaning was not good. So this was also a concern, and uh, we tried to do our best to, to fix this problem. And, of course, every time we have a, a, a team, we try to, to minimize the impact of the upper respiratory tract infections on our, our members. So we again distributed information to our uh, athletes and also we distributed hand sanitizer. We gave them two small sprays so they, can, they could uh, clean their hands and uh, apply the hand sanitizer during the games. And uh, we minimized, I don't know if uh, all this the education and the distributing the hand sanitizer was a real effect, but I can tell you we had 20 cases of illnesses during the games among all the team members. Only nine were related to upper respiratory uh, infections, and seven of them were athletes. So probably we got some impact of our measures. Then again, water quality, but not the drinking quality, but we can say the competing water. So the Wanavara Bay is the bay that is surrounding uh, Rio, and there has several famous beaches like Copacabana, Ipanema, Flamengo. So to give you an idea, I will summarize. Uh, Copacabana and uh, Flamingo beaches are forbidden for bath the whole year. Forbidden for bath the whole year. So Copacabana was the disease of triathlon. Uh, mm, what else? Well, they do beach volley. And the sailing competition was held very close to there. And the sailing uh, doctors concerned, we didn't have any sailor, but I have some good friends that are team physicians for the sailing competition. So the main concern was not the athletes swallowing, the, swallowing that dirty water. The problem was they have multiple cuts in their uh, competition. So the, con the concern was infection, the skin infections on the abrasions and the cuts and the skin cuts. And I, I, I got evidence from some of them that they got some complications in that sense. So this is a difficult thing that we faced and it's difficult to plan for that. And just to give you uh, some information, so a um, couple of years before we came, uh, one uh, resistant uh, bacteria, uh, Klebsiella, was discovered in one of the, in the, uh, one of the beaches. And um, some competitors blamed their low performance to this uh, issue, which is, I think, probably difficult to, to blame. And just maybe to, to finalize some, some thoughts. We are coming more or less from a rich country, developed country. We came to a developing country with multiple issues. So I, I, I felt myself in a situation when we were out of the villa, the, seeing the city, plenty of uh, the, the, the morros, the, the favelas, very poor areas, very dirty areas. And this is the daily situation in the country and, and in the city and crime every day. So we, we, work there, we came there, we were complaining about the cleanliness and other things, but we have to, to look at this as a perspective. So yeah, we are trying to protect the athletes, but we have to be very respectful to the local organizers when we are mainly disclosing these things and chatting about that, and mainly when we are discussing with the media. That's it. Thank you.